Hi everyone and welcome to another video um, with me, Aduke, where we'll be talking about Nigerian history and celebrating incredible people because why not? And on this episode today, we are talking about an incredible man, Bishop Samuel Ajayi Crowder. Year 1809 in Oyo State in what is now Nigeria, there was a baby boy born to, into a lovely family. And he was named Ajayi according to the culture because he came out of his mother with his face down. It wasn't something that happened a lot, but when it did, it was pretty special. His family consulted their family god at the time called Ifa to find out the destiny of their child. They wanted to know which of the many gods he was to worship. But to their surprise, when they went to this priest, the priest said, oh, this is a very special boy, not because he was born with his head facing down, but he was meant to serve the almighty God called Eledumare. Even with everything going on, Ajayi's father, Ayami, was able to still establish his um, business, you know, and he was very successful with, with farming that he brought Ajayi into the business. And by the age, by the age of eight, Ajayi already had his own farm. Like he already had a business and um, he was able to buy his own land and have a business. And then there were like some little boys around the area and they had a little boys club where they owned land as well. And they chose him as the leader. So from very early on, Ajayi was very patient and kind and just very attentive to other people's needs as a boy. One morning when Ajayi was just 12 years old, an army of about 2,000 men came into his little town to demolish the old place. They were instructed by the Fulani leader at the time, the Sultan of Sokoto, to you know, come in and take people as slaves for the Portuguese. This was absolutely terrible because even though Ajay's town, Ajay's little village had so uh, had men, and they knew of the terrible things happening around this time. They were not prepared. They didn't even have up to half of the men. So after killing a lot of people, this army of invaders tied the necks of children and their parents um, tied their necks, dragged them. And among these children were Ajayi, his cousin, his mom and the four-month-old baby and his sister. And this was the last day Ajayi ever saw his father. Ajayi was then separated from his mom and his sisters all at different times and within days um, he was alone. And he talked about this time being absolutely horrifying and he felt like killing himself in fact he tried several times to take his own life because he could not imagine the pain ahead as a little boy completely alone away from his family within a matter, matter of days his life changed it was then bought by a portuguese trader who put him on a ship going to america with the intention of selling them off um, but then, remember those good people f around the same time fighting to abolish slavery and they were basically just checking to see if people were, you know, social distancing away from foolishness, you know. They, they came and they hijacked the ship. I don't know why I did that, but they did. They hijacked the ship and, and they rescued Ajayi and the enslaved people. Um, and as you can imagine, Ajayi was absolutely delighted to be rescued, but he did something before he went off with the rescuer. He popped over to the guy who held him captive and he was like, what are you for? They created a safe haven in Freetown, Sierra Leone, where they where they took Ajayi and other people. It's in Freetown where they brought Ajayi. Um, it was a, a lot of Christian missionaries were there, you know, and Ajayi was then introduced to Christianity. He, he loved to read. He loved languages. Um, he absolutely was just incredible. Ajayi was baptized. He chose the name Samuel Crowther. 
Shortly after, lovely Mr. and Mrs. Davey were going to London and they decided to take Ajay with them. Um, it was a short trip, but he was able to study in St. Mary's, Mary's um, school in Liverpool Street. When he got back to Freetown, he was also still doing his farming work. The ones he, his dad taught him all the skills, he was still using that. Um, and 1825, when the first IR institution in Sierra Leone was opened, Ajay was actually the first first student enrolled there um, and really respected by his peers younger people he was like a mentor to younger students um, older people absolutely were like wow he's he's one to watch on their rescue mission they rescued a girl called asano and she was also brought to freetown and she fell in love with ajayi they both fell in love nice and she changed her name to she added Susan Thompson to her name. It was a project by a lot of the slave abolishers who really wanted to um, build relationships with the natives um, and also wanted to convince them to, to basically stop slave trading. Um, and as you can imagine, tensions were very high at, the, at, at that time. So what they did was they chose Ajayi to go on this trip with them a lot of them died um before they could even get to it so it was it was it was not a success you know so we'll never really know what they really intended um but but even through that trip as as it was very tedious um ajayi really proved himself and he kind of showed a selfless Ness. Um, so the church society people invited Ajayi over to London and they trained him some more and in 1844 they made him a minister. So he went back to Freetown and he started to preach but he preferred to preach in the Yoruba language but even though he knew Latin and Greek and obviously English because um, Freetown was a British colony at the time he absolutely preferred to um, preach in Europe. A few years go by and a lot of people started to long to settle back in the land they were captured in. They wanted to go back. Again, Ajayi was chosen to be one of the missionaries who went with this set of people back to the area called Nigeria. So went about spreading the message of the Bible all over, um, most especially with the people in Yoruba land. Um, he definitely went farther than the Yoruba land, but he and, and he also had the goal, the goal to spread unity irrespective of religious choices. At that time, you can imagine the mistrust and the hurt among people um, in, due to slavery and the wars going on. So his goal was to make peace, spread the gospel, encourage Christians not to just follow the Bible, but also to get involved in politics. He wanted them to be business people. He used his skills as with farming, all sorts of things. And he was extremely skilled. And, and he used this to make life better for the people. Working as a missionary in Abel Kuta. He was working as a missionary in Abel Kuta, which is another town in Yoruba land. I'm smiling because this is good. Because guess what? Um, shortly after he arrived in Abel Kuta, he was reunited with his mother. Oh my goodness. Oh, hello. Thankfully, they were reunited again and he was able to baptize his mother. Then invited to England where he met the prime minister and the queen. And he actually had to like teach the queen geography because he literally had to show her a map of West Africa and kind of like explain to her where everything was. And they were so, the, pe the British people he met were so shocked that wow a black person was that intelligent you know he was also working on translating the bible to yoruba um which was the first african language to be translated um and this was all due to him man called Henry Penn, who was the secretary of the cms who thought uh, ajayi had credentials and he was definitely qualified enough to be bishop um but a lot of people were like no he's not like he's black he's not intelligent enough it was a real struggle and Ajay didn't even want to be like it was he was good all by himself serving God and and serving people anyway in 1864 he was ordained as the first African bishop um this was great and you would think that aiders will stop but they made his life so uncomfortable because when he went back to the Niger Delta region where he was to serve um, one of the aiders was called 
and we town said he thought africans did not have enough intellect to do the job um this town said was so pissed off at the idea of ajayi being a bishop that he made it his own mission instead of doing the work of god to go gossiping to other white people don't you think this black people will be better being led by us there's still division among the ethnic groups in this africa place you know mm -hmm. it's caused by your descendants bro um, he definitely had that colonization spirit brewing. God love him. A lot of the white missionaries did not listen to Bishop Ajayi. They did not submit to his authority. They made his life very uncomfortable, so much so that he actually had to resign. And all, all this was going on around the same year, years. He lost his amazing wife, his wonderful mother, and one of his very close friends. All Bishop Ajayi wanted to do was just serve people. You know, he wasn't really one to chase the titles or anything. So by the time all these accusations were coming in and people, the people he was leading, the African people he was leading who were supportive of him were beginning to get fired, you know, from... The, but they believed that if they could prove that, I guess, people working under him, he couldn't control them, that then, I guess, Bishop Ajayi wasn't competent enough. Shortly after his resignation, he had a stroke and he passed away sadly. Um, he devoted his life to serving people, to making life better for people. You know, he really believed in the education of Africans and he knew that the world was developing into a world where they would be undermined. So he constantly encouraged people to challenge the dangerous ways of thinking. Um, he supported people in businesses. He was ill. He was a man who translated the Bible to Yoruba and 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 just working on numerous other projects. Um, and this same selfless spirit went down his generation when his grandson another absolute legend urban macaulay absolutely important in the fight for creating a society where um, nigerians could feel safe irrespective of where they came from and also breaking down colonial walls and structures it was absolutely incredible then we have his great 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 granddaughter who was the incredibly brave and selfless woman dr stella who essentially basically saved millions of nigerians from ebola there's also a movie 93 days that i really think you should check out um about her story if this family literally served nigeria before she was in nigeria fighting for her to be nigeria and after being established as nigeria they literally sacrificed their lives for nigerians to enjoy being alive i think that's i think that's absolutely wonderful in 2014 archbishop well be and uh, gave a public apology to bishop ajay crowther of immense hardship and despite the racism of many whites he evangelized so effectively that he was eventually ordained bishop over much protest he led his missionary diocese brilliantly but was in the end falsely accused and had to resign not long before his death Crowder did not make himself grand. Today, well over 70 million Christians in Nigeria are his spiritual heirs. We are sorry for his suffering acts of Anglicans in this country. Learning from their foolishness and from his heroism, we seek to be a church that does not again exclude those whom God is calling. I'm charming. I'm loving. I'm charming. I'm charming. I'm smart, I'm intelligent, I'm nice, beautiful. Yes, you are, baby. Yes, you are. <laughs>